The Rings of Power, Soren's Identity Clues. During an interview with Deadline, Vickers discusses the shocking news, the length of time he's been aware of his character's true identity, and the ways in which he was able to incorporate this information into his portrayal. He explains Soren's emotional coming out session with Galadriel, his goals, and the reasoning for his choice to save Galadriel at sea and subsequently try to kill Adar. Also included in this discussion is the dramatic coming out scene with Adar. In addition, he reveals certain hints concerning Halbrand's identity as Sorin that viewers could have overlooked throughout the course of the season. In case you guys haven't been given any hints, Sorin showed his true face. The Rings of Power left viewers guessing until the very end of its first season about which figure would emerge victorious and assume the mantle of the Dark Lord. The author of The Lord of the Rings, J.R.R. Tolkien, provided some inspiration for the mystery, which was based on his writings. In the legends that surround Middle-earth, Sorin is said to have visited the elves while posing as a fair man in order to deceive them into creating the first three rings of power and, in the process, discover the elves' deepest, most guarded secrets. And despite the fact that there were a few potential candidates on the show, the stranger who dropped from the sky, the Lord Father of the Orcs, and one of the weird witches who loved to burn things on fire, Halbrand, the long-lost king of the Southlands, has been the leading candidate for some time now. Aside from that, his first meeting with Galadriel was on the huge sea, which seemed a little too coincidental and haphazard. The rumor is true. The man has an Egorian-like air about him. In addition, Galadriel helps him recover from an injury he sustained in the last episode by transporting him to the Elven Kingdom. While he's there, he's able to form a friendship with the blacksmith Selembrior, and provide him with some useful advice regarding the mithril that he's attempting to forge. They don't have a lot of potent metal that the dwarves extracted from their caverns. However, they might be able to fashion them into… rings. Almost immediately, Galadriel develops a suspicious disposition, and quickly approaches Halbrand with her concerns. He admits that, indeed, he is Sorin, and expresses the hope that he may bring order back to Middle-earth. He makes the offer for her to serve as his queen alongside him. Given the sexual tension that's existed between these two for the entirety of the series, the proposition is not completely out of the question. In addition, he makes the strong point that despite the fact that he covets power, she is a kind person person who would assist him in staying on the right side of the law rather than turning to evil. Galadriel turns down Halbrand and proposal to Sorens as it becomes apparent to her that he's unable to differentiate between saving and controlling Middle-earth. It was said by Gil-Glad that Galadriel would really make the evil that she fought stronger than before. He had a valid point. It's not without reason that Gil-Galad is regarded as the king of the elves. In the very first episode, he made the prediction that Galadriel would, through no fault of her own, bring back the tremendous evil that she'd been pursuing. Gil-Galad consults with Elrond after failing in his first attempt to remove her from Middle-earth and return her to Valinor, where she could spend the rest of her life in the elf realm. Galadriel was so certain her search should continue, Elrond says. We foresaw that if it had, she might have inadvertently kept alive the very evil she sought to defeat, Gilgalad replies. For the same wind that seeks to blow out a fire may also cause its spread. And then of course, she does exactly that in the very next episode she appears in. She jumps off the ship that's taking her away from Middle-earth, meets Halbrand, and ultimately saves his life. However, in the process of doing so, she unintentionally assists in bringing Sauron back to power. Before it was presented to Theo, Halbrand had the chance to choose a replacement selection from the available weapons. Galadriel and Halbrand are successful in capturing Adar and retrieving what they believe to be the weapon that Theo discovered. However, it's actually a tool of Sorin that turns out to be a key that activates the eruption of Mount Doom. Galadriel and Halbrand also take back what they believe to be the weapon that Theo discovered. In point of fact, Adar has given the instrument to one of his followers, and he's instead carrying a phony version of it in order to deceive his captors. The idea that neither Halbrand nor Galadriel ever checked the bundle that was supposed to contain the tool before Galadriel gave it back to Theo after it was recovered stretches the bounds of plausibility. It's common knowledge that Halbrand stole it from Adar and kept it for himself. It's highly possible that he was aware of Adar's ruse and nevertheless permitted it to take place. It's unknown why Galadriel did not perform a second check on the items that were contained within the fabric.
And that's it guys, hope you had a lot of fun exploring Soren's identity clues. Do make sure to like this video, subscribing to our channel, and hit the notification bell to be in the loop when we come up with more interesting content.